When I'm with one of them, we're with Tandi, who is now having her dinner. And uh, interestingly, she keeps looking up and behind uh, where we are. So I'm hoping that uh, young Tamba is possibly around there, that area, maybe. What say you, Fergus? Do you think so? Maybe? Maybe. maybe. There, look, you see how she's looking. And as I was saying this morning, I don't know if you were watching this morning, you know, once the cubs get to the age that Tamba is now, of course, they will begin to bully their mothers off kills. And so she almost has to eat when he's not around. And if it's not when he's not around, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's when he's satiated himself. Sometimes she'll feed for a while before she takes him to the kill. You know, this is just beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> v, you ask quite an interesting question. You say, why don't male leopards join coalitions? V, um... It's a difficult question to answer, I think, because, and not so much because of the leopards, but because of the only social cats. Um, you know, the only social cat in the world, of course, is... Sorry, one second. Now I'm just going to quickly call, call myself in here. The stations I've relocated, uh, Tandi, she is static, same place, not no sign of the youngster yet. Um, right, so what were we, so were we saying? Oh, right, okay. So the only social cat in the world, of course, is a lion. And we're not convinced as to why they're social. So the uh, there are various answers about how they look after their... It's easier for them to look after their cubs, how it's easier for them to uh, catch prey. In the terms of the latter, it turns out that actually often a single lioness on her own will eat as much as three lionesses in a pride. So that's not necessarily a good answer. We think it's probably got to do with protecting the babies and making sure that they are not killed by marauding males. Now, no other cat seems to have that issue. Why no other cat has that issue, I'm really not sure. But there would be no point in a male forming a coalition because, well, I mean, by definition, leopards are solitary and it is the most successful strategy for them to be solitary. Go ahead. I know that's not a very satisfactory answer. Yeah, about three out of four, four out of five. They're just wanting to know on the radio uh, how well we're seeing her. And she's feeding on the ground. Isn't that light perfect? Now, of course, if she was really wanting to perform for us, she would go into the tree immediately. I love the sight of her just when she sticks her head up through the, through the gap there. It's just gorgeous. I'm not sure which piece she's eating there. I think it's probably a hind quarter. Lady Starfire, you say, is this leopard eating a buffalo? Lady Starfire, no, this leopard is eating an impala. And that is the horn that you can see there. A buffalo is far, 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 far too large for a female leopard to kill. Uh, she wouldn't have a chance at killing a buffalo. She'd be 
completely out of her depth and buffalo would make mincemeat of her quite quickly if he could get hold of her. She weighs probably in the region of about 35 to 40 kilograms. Uh, we is about 90 pounds or so and a big buffalo bull will weigh 600 kilograms in this area and that's about 1,400 pounds. So she'd have no chance at all with the buffalo. That said, I have heard a story, now whether it's true or not I don't know, but I've heard a story of a male leopard killing a giraffe once. Now, I mean, that's just a ridiculous thing to my mind, but apparently it has happened. Shelley, you say, is this the same kill from this morning? Yeah, definitely. They will take a little bit of time to finish off a kill like this. It's a large piece of prey for her, and a really nice piece of prey. I'm just not sure why she's looking off behind us. Oh, she can hear the other vehicles approaching now. And you'll be able to see that our shadows are slowly lengthening over the top of her. It's at this stage, of course, that we want her to go up into the tree so that the glorious golden light of the African winter sunset can uh, have her in her full resplendence. What I'm going to do is probably just move slightly forward so that this chap can get a good view with his guests. Well, no, our shadow might touch her, but we should be okay. Can you still see her there, Ferg? Yeah. There we go. I was just saying hello to the tracker who used to work where I used to work. I believe poor old Tristan is still searching for his cheetah, so let's go and find out how that's going. Well, James, it's about as good as it was the whole afternoon. Absolutely nothing so far, so not going very well at all. 